Hey everyone, I need your attention for one minute. This is not one of those ads. This is something that has changed my entire life. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that this is all about personal development as the foundation for everything good in your life. And this podcast is now sponsored by Growth Day, which is the world's first all-in-one personal development app. I mean, oh my gosh, can you imagine having everything all in one place that you need to create the life that you want? Now you can. So if you've been struggling with your motivation, your mood, your productivity, or your purpose, you have to check this out. Growth Day helps you consciously change your life and achieve your potential. It has all the self-improvement tools, motivational classes, and life coaching all in one place. So many of us want to improve our lives, but the question is how? Where do we start? What do we use? How do you get unstuck? How do you make self-improvement stick? Well, research shows how. It's when you consistently journal, track your habits, set goals, learn from empowering mentors, and challenge yourself that you'll be happier, healthier, and more successful. But let me ask you something. Where do you actually do all of your personal development work? I have to tell you that over 300,000 people use Growth Day for a reason. It works. It's the world's number one software for self-improvement. Growth Day has an amazing mindset journal that I absolutely love, a habit tracker, and a goal-setting system. In fact, I bet if you went to my stories this week, you probably saw me using the journaling app and telling you to do it too, because it's the first time that journaling has ever actually stuck consistently in my life because of this app. And best of all, Growth Day has live inspirational classes every single week from the world's top motivational speakers and life coaches. These are people who have impacted my life in huge ways. These are mentors who I already knew and loved. In fact, this is something that's so huge for me, you guys. I personally teach a class in Growth Day every single month, and it is one of the most fun things that I get to do, and I'd love to see you there. These classes will truly shift your life. There's always something new that you will learn. So join me in 300,000 achievers growing our lives with actual real intention. Visit growthday.com slash Lori for a free trial. Yes, you can try this for free. So go to growthday.com slash Lori and go live your best life. You guys, that's growthday.com forward slash Lori. And I can't wait to see you there. Hey everyone, you might be like me where you listen to podcasts to potentially motivate you and also pull you out of a funk. And I know that this year has really challenged everyone's mental health. This last year has challenged everyone's mental health. So some of us are juggling childcare, working full-time in our homes, fighting with our partners more than usual, potentially. And on top of that, many of us are encountering unexpected job changes and challenges It's a lot to handle under normal circumstances and especially during a pandemic. All of this leads to a huge amount of stress, which is why I'm so grateful for our partner, Talkspace. You guys, I wholeheartedly recommend Talkspace for therapy. Talkspace therapists give you the support you need to feel your best. Talkspace has thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. You know, I'm so open about me having a ton of anxiety in the past and how debilitating that has been for me. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. And I think that you'll be amazed at how much progress that you can make every single week. You guys, I am so glad that we found Talkspace to partner with. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com or download the app. Make sure to use the code HAPPY, H-A-P-P-Y in all caps, to get $100 off of your first month and show your support for the show. That's HAPPY and Talkspace.com. Every single no turned into a yes. Some were three years later, some were one year after the first no, some were six years after the no. But they all turned, every one of them, into a yes. And we created great thriving partnerships. 
Welcome to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. I'm Lori Harder, founder of The Bliss Project, three-time fitness world champion, fitness expert, and cover model turned self-love junkie, lifestyle entrepreneur, and author. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a thought that will help you bust through your fears, connect to your soul, and get focused and clear so you can elevate your life, business, and relationships. We don't wait until we're ready for someone to tell us we're good enough. We take what we want and we anoint ourselves. Get ready to earn, own, and unapologetically rock your happiness every single day. Are you with me? Here we go. Welcome back to the show. I can honestly say that without this next guest, I am not sure if I would be starting my new company right now. She is the cheerleader of all women. She has so much belief in people. She has written one of my favorite new books. You guys, literally, you have to read this book. It is a must if you want to do anything in your life. If you have big dreams, this just made me run through a wall. It is literally one of my favorite books of all time. And I can tell you that this woman is going to ignite your soul on fire and remind you that anything is possible together. We also have a book giveaway at the end of this podcast. So you guys know that I love to give away books. We are giving away 10 of her books. So tune in to the end to find out what you need to do in order to get one of Jamie's books. So my next guest is Jamie Kern-Lima. She's an American entrepreneur, billion dollar business success story. You guys, for women and everyone, anyone around the world. That is absolutely insanity. She's a champion of women, a philanthropist, culture shifter, and highly sought after keynote speaker. She co-founded It Cosmetics from her living room, grew it to a top-selling makeup and skincare brand. Then she sold it to L'Oreal for over one point. $2 billion in their largest US acquisition to date, making Jamie the first female CEO in L'Oreal's 100 plus year history. She's passionate about inspiring and mentoring entrepreneurs, building businesses, making a difference in the lives of women and girls and giving back in a big way. She's a passionate speaker and she shares her stories of inspiration, underestimation, overcoming self-doubt, rejection, and never giving up. She currently owns a part of more than 15 companies. She also works passionately with many philanthropic causes, including Look Good, Feel Better, where It Cosmetics donated $40 million in product to date to help women face the effects of cancer with more confidence. She lives in Los Angeles with her husband, Paulo, daughter, Wonder, and son, Wilder. And of course, two French bulldogs, Rainbow and Sunshine. You guys, let's get started. Jamie, I'm so excited to have you back on the show. It seems like Yay. yesterday. I'm so excited. And you know what is even more fun is like now this time, I felt like I knew about you before for sure. But then I I read your book. Oh, oh. my gosh. And, and there's so much to talk about about when a book first comes out and how you probably felt like releasing this book to people like, oh, I'm so glad it's done. You're so excited. And then you release it. How did you feel like when you first sent those copies out, knowing that people were going to write or read all about your life? And let me tell you, you, sh you share like everything, the whole vulnerable journey. So tell me how I you know. felt. Lori, I'm so excited. First of all, thank you so much for, for having me on and with your community. This book is, uh, wow. It is like 95% of it is stories I've never shared. Mm. Um, stories that are really about my journey of going from this girl who didn't believe in herself mm. to learning how to believe in herself, from not trusting herself, to like learning how to truly like hear your own intuition and, and, and trust yourself and going from, you know, not, well, I should say doubting I'm enough to like knowing I'm enough. And it's, it's, this book is, is in so many ways, not my story. In so many ways, it's like the story of so many people listening right now. Um, and, and my prayer for them is like, I mean, it's packed. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's the best work I've ever done. And, you know, the whole intention um, of the book, and I'm donating hundred percent of the proceeds, by the way. So like my whole intention of this book is like, 
that everything I've ever gone through, failed at, succeeded at, struggled with, overcame, that all of that can hopefully be of service Mm. to like everyone else in their own journey of going like, wait, why am I getting so many setbacks? Why are people doubting my own dream? Why Mm. do I, don't I feel like I have the support I need? Or like, why am I struggling with doubt in my own head? Because that's me, right? That's been me my whole journey. And I figured out how to overcome most of it. There's still Mm -hmm. a couple things I still struggle with right now, which I actually talk about in the book too. Um, Stuff I've never shared before. So I am freaking out to answer your question. (laughs) But like, I just, the way I'm, and I share some stuff, Lori, you know, I share some (laughs) stuff like, that will never come out of my mouth, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing that I keep telling myself is, okay, it's not about me. (laughs) This book is about like every woman and every person who's ever been doubted, Mm -hmm. who has ever struggled with like that thought of like, am I enough? Like, am I qualified? Do I have what it takes? And like how to push past and like break through, you know, that BS, frankly, that we tell ourselves. And sometimes we hear from other people, how do you break Mm -hmm. through it and like step into all that you are and all that you're born to be? Like when I make it about that in my head, then I can handle uh, barely some of the stuff I share in the book. <laughs> mm, I I literally like uh, when I, when I first got on here, like it, I I was just kind of telling myself like hold your shit together because I feel so connected to you right now after reading this book because I'm borrowing your belief and what I want people to hear is like this is so deeply impactful because I already like you are affecting my life so much already. Like I'm going through some hard stuff in my company right now, not in a bad way. And this is a totally normal thing when you take on something super new, but you can feel very alone and you can feel, you know, people can say things to you, not they can, they're going to, they say things to you that can really shake you. And you can really, really question yourself. So I want everybody listening because I know that they are going through this exact thing. Like the fact that you're, you are not sharing the things that you share in there for you. Like you are not. Cause I know it would have been easier to not tell those stories. But every time you told a story, I was like, oh my God. Like the fact that she has gone through this and is sharing this and is so like, I can tell some things are still like raw in your heart, but you definitely want to share it because and that's the why and that's this book is so powerful because you're doing for the reasons that you're getting you know all the criticism or you're being told no like those are the things that encourage you to keep going for everybody else and it's just it's been such a reminder for me it truly like when i tell you guys that it has been making me want to run through a wall like i feel so deeply like spiritually connected to like God, I feel very clear that women are all here, like what we can do together. And I think your book is just going to be such a beacon. Um, So I just had to share that. And hopefully people will go like, I'm legitimately sharing it every day on stories. Like, please go get this book. It's going to change your life because it's, it's changing my life. So I just had to tell you that right from the beginning. You know, in, in so many of the stories that you share in here, I don't even know where to start. But I think one of the the biggest things that I want to ask you is just about the very beginning with the idea because if we're if we're talking to everybody who listens to this podcast it's people who you know they either have these big ideas or they already have these businesses and with social media and everything out in the world it's like we question ourselves we think it's yeah. been done before we compare yeah. ourselves and I know that a lot of your story you share is about like following your authenticity and what you know is for you. So can you tell me a little bit about, you know, the beginning and how do we know and how can we get back to knowing why we're supposed to be doing this and get really connected to keep moving and not compare? Yes. Oh, I love that question so much. Thank you. Um, And, you know, also just to share on your point too, um, is that uh, thank you for sharing what you just shared about how the book's impacting you. Because the thing I've learned is like, when you just Google my story out there and you see all the stories, like you kind of see like, oh, you know, she was a Denny's waitress and like started with no money and built a billion dollar company, sold mm-hmm. it for a billion dollars from her living room. But like all the stories kind of just uh, talk about the headline, right? And I think when we, and which is part of why I wrote this book, because I would get so many like DMs on Instagram with women saying like, oh my gosh, like 
I, you know, did you get lucky? Like, was it mm. easy? And like, how, you know, all those things. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, when you see clips on, on, on other people's like, um, uh, articles they write or social or whatever, you really just get this glimpse of the outcome. Mm. And so your question about like, how did you start? How do you know? I love it so much because it was, um, and, and part of why I wrote this book, by the way, is so everyone out there feels less alone in their setbacks and in what they're going through and can really wrap their head around it, shift their mindset around it in a different way that actually helps them see their setbacks differently yeah. um, and helps them see them really as, as set up for mm. all that is to come. Um, and so, you know, for me, I mean, it's tough, right? So, so I thought <laughs> mm-hmm. so many of us will have gone through this. I thought, oh my gosh, I have this really great idea. Mm-hmm. I'm authentically going to try to solve my own problem. And if I pour all my money, my savings, everything I have into creating something that is, that works, that adds value, that could help other people, it's going to be huge. Mm-hmm. And like, I thought, that's kind of all you need to do. Yeah. Uh, and then I learned uh, entrepreneurship or starting your own anything, offering your own gift to the world and your mm. own talent to the world, whether it's as a painter, an artist, uh, uh, any type of creator or your own business, right? Uh, it's not that easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was such a journey. And, you know, the first three years, so we poured all of our money into um, R&D and an advisory board. And I just thought, okay, once the product's ready, like it's going to be huge. And, and uh, maybe we'll be able to finally afford to hire people, mm-hmm. you know, to actually be on our team and all those things. Because we were scrappy in our, when I say we, my husband and I wrote the business plan on our honeymoon flight and both quit our jobs and just dove all in. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize that from the moment we launched the business, it would be three years before I could pay myself. Wow. Um, I was literally eating those dollar hot. I don't know if, you, if you've ever gone to Costco and they have like the uh, the food stand outside and you get dollar hot dogs. Oh yeah. Like, All right. Right. Like, I mean, they're good. So yeah. that was a bonus, but I'm like, okay, what's a dollar right now? What <laughs> yeah. is, it was like that mindset mm. for three years wow. and couldn't afford to hire anybody. And, and so many uh, people out there that are creating their own thing right now might relate to this, mm-hmm. but like I use my middle name, my middle, so my name's Jamie Marie Kern Lima. And so at some point I'm like, okay, I can't just pitch myself to the press trying to, I mean, I can, but like trying to get press, I wanted it to seem like a real get, like the interview was a real get. So I was like, so Marie got her own email address, Marie at Jamie. <laughs> But, I mean, Marie at, at cosmetics.com and Marie would email like, good morning, America. And, you know, everybody, the Ellen show, everybody and be like, great news. Our founder, Jamie Kirtley is available for an interview and we have a new product launching. And anyways, Marie hustled her butt <laughs> off and like she would do everything. And it was just like, oh my gosh, it was like the most embarrassing stuff, but it's like, you've got to do what you got to do and you're small. And, you know, we sent our product out to so many retailers and it was three years of no's, Mm -hmm. uh, every single one of them, like brutal no's, some of them, you know, and Mm -hmm. there's a couple things I learned that had I learned sooner in my journey would have saved me like a million nights crying myself to sleep. And the first is because our positioning was really different Mm -hmm. because, you know, not only did we have, you know, really, you know, we had products that really worked, but I, I was headset in my soul on using models that represented real women, yeah. right? And at the time, this was, you know, uh, 10 years ago we launched. And at the time, you know, YouTube wasn't big yet. There yeah. was no people taking their makeup off, nothing. All you really saw was, you know, overly Photoshopped images in, in magazines and on television of women that, uh, you know, you don't even know if they're wearing the product they're selling. Totally. And it's not even real, Right. And I just um, had this moment. And if we if we have a chance to talk about like how to know your why and all those kind of things, because I think it's applicable to everybody. But when I did like when I dug deep, deep, deep on my why was I doing what I was doing? How did I get back up every time I got knocked down for three years of no's? Like my why wasn't just oh I want to create a product that solves my own problems because I have rosacea which is a hereditary skin condition and no makeup would work for me right which is yeah. like part of why I started the company but like 
It wasn't just like, oh, I want to launch this product to help everyone else too, which I did want to help everyone else. But like, that wasn't a deep enough why to keep me going. Like my deep, deep, deep why, which a lot of people make this mistake, I think. They just kind of create their mission statement and they kind of get a why behind their goal or their Mm -hmm. dream. And it sounds really good. Like, oh, I want to pay my kids way through college or, oh, I want to buy a house. And those are great whys. But at the end of the day, if it's not emotionally just deep, like to the core of you, um, it's not a powerful enough why. And you've got to do the work of just peeling back those layers because it has to be so powerful that you'll keep getting knocked up every time you get knocked down. You'll keep eating dollar Costco hot dogs if you're blessed enough to have Costco <laughs> for you. you. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, like, they're still kind of good. It's easy to fall back on that. <laughs> right. And then when you can eventually afford like that freaking, what is it, Berry Sunday? It's like <laughs> a great day, right? It's another dollar. Um, but anyway, it's like it, the why has got to be so deep. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and for me, it wasn't like, oh, let me just create a great product. Let me help other people. Although I wanted to do both of those things. It was like, oh, these images, I had this huge epiphany when I couldn't find makeup that worked for me. And I was like, why? I'm like, oh, wait, I've never even seen images that look like me. And I realized like my entire life from the time I was a little girl growing up, every time I would see an image of beauty, the beauty Mm. industry would put out there in magazines or on television, I would aspire to look like that. And they always made me feel like I wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, you know what? Let's change this. Like, let's let's change the narrative. And so for me, you know, the why, of course, was launching great products, but the deeper why was like, let me put out images of real women as my models, calling them beautiful and meaning it. And I'm going to do it for like every little girl out there who's about to start mm-hmm. doubting herself and every grown woman or person who still does. And that why was like, okay, that's what kept me going and going and going. And here's the thing I learned um, that uh, had I known sooner, it would have saved me so many nights crying myself to sleep is like, okay, when I'd walk into a Sephora or a department store or anywhere, and they told me no, and that like, you know, these type of images and models don't sell products Mm -hmm. and all those things, like like the packaging wasn't high-end enough. I got that feedback a lot. They wanted it to be really gorgeous and beautiful and very high-end. And I'm like, okay, but like, you know, this is for every person, Mm -hmm. not so people can sit it on their vanity and know that it's pretty, but never actually use it because they're scared to, right? How many times do we buy like something and it's like this lipstick, it's so beautiful. And we're like, we only use it sometimes, <laughs> yeah. right? I'm like, oh no, I want to be part of women's lives every day. And mm. anyways, they all told me no. And what I realized is anytime you're doing something new or novel, and to your question, it doesn't have to be a new product or a new idea, but like no one can do a product or idea the way you're going to do mm-hmm. it, right? This is for every person out there. Like, cause a lot of people talk themselves out of their own dreams because they go, oh, this product's already been done or, oh, yeah. this idea's already... Nobody can do it the way you can do it. So guess what? It's never been done before. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing I'll say to every person out there is when you are authentically you and you do it the way you're going to do it, whether it's a blog, a podcast, a book, a, a product, uh, whatever it is, right? Ex- so many experts mm-hmm. are going to doubt it. Yeah. Because they're only used to seeing things. They've only ever seen certain things succeed, right? And if you're doing something new, then they've never seen it succeed before. So they don't realize they're doing this and they call themselves visionaries and they are often in so many ways. But I've learned when it comes to like when you're doing something new, something different, like every other person is only going to see it through the lens Mm -hmm. of their own limitations and their own, and they're not going to know this especially the people that pride themselves in being visionaries and experts, but they're going to see it through the lens of their own limitations. And they're going to see it through the lens of what they've seen succeed before. Yes. Right. So I remember crying, my, like literally sobbing my eyes out after a big no in the Sephora headquarters. Mm. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. We were down to no money. I really thought it was going to be a yes. It was a no. And when I look back on it, I know it's because I was trying to do something that had never been done before. Mm. And 
a bunch of well-meaning people who are awesome just didn't see how it was going to succeed yet. And it's like, okay, we've got to remember this because we, and by the way, we can't take rejection personally when it mm-hmm. happens. Whole nother story. I could talk to you for like 10 hours. <laughs> I know. I'm like, like, how many podcasts can we do today? <laughs> oh my gosh. So many rejections. This mm. is so big. This is so big. I know this is off topic. Let me just share it in case someone out there needs to hear this right now. So many rejections. We like, like, oh my gosh. And, and, and you know, I got some painful rejections mm-hmm. that even personal to me. I've done a lot of things wrong in my journey, more than I can count. One of the things I did right was every time I got rejected, no matter how bad it hurt me, no matter how rude the person might have been or how wrong I thought they were, (laughs) um, I I decided to never take it personally Mm. with respect to my relationship with them. Mm. Even when it hurt and crushed me, I would reply to them with like, it's going to be a yes one day. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait till that day happens. Uh, and then I go home and cry myself to sleep. Right. But when, <laughs> what ended up happening year after year after year of me doing this, and then by the way, all those people that said no, we would get like, finally get a Marie, Marie would get a big press placement. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so Jamie would then email all the buyers that said no and be like, look, we just got this, you know, yeah. coverage in this magazine. Or, and it was a continual mindset. Mm. In Jamie's mind, this is going to happen, yeah. Sephora and Ulta and QVC and all the departments. This is going to happen. And what was cool about this is when you fast forward, Lori, every single no turned into a yes. Some were three years later, some were one year after the first no, some were six years wow. after the no. But they all turned every one of them into a yes. And we created great thriving partnerships. And I look back and I'm like, oh gosh, so I could talk for 50 years about the stuff I did wrong. But the one thing that's really hard to do because we are human. And when somebody says something that hurts us or they reject us, it sucks Mm -hmm. and it hurts. And it's very hard to separate how we feel uh, personally from what is the right move professionally. And that Mm -hmm. would be one thing that, you know, of the millions of things I did wrong, one of the things I did right that allowed us to to start thriving um, in every retailer was that I nurtured the heck out of those relationships. And I decided they were going to want us, Mm -hmm. even if they had no intention of wanting us one day. (laughs) (laughs) It's so, it's so good. And those are the moments it's, it's like the, 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 the decision making moment where you decide how you're going to react is literally everything. And I watched you turn it into something positive all throughout your book. So I want to talk about that because there was a, you know, I think there was a big moment in your story when I was reading your book and I've heard you talk about it before, but I really want to, I want to mention it here because sometimes we, we don't realize that we're putting these experts on a pedestal. And also there's parts of our past story that we're we're really looking for, um, you know, somebody who sits in a position like that to validate us. And, you know, everybody needs validation in some form or another, but sometimes we hinge it so much on these people. Um, and I know that you, you know, just, just the, the idea, you guys, but before I set this up for Jamie, like to even get these different meetings where you go and pitch your product, like it is so nerve wracking and scary. And you also have to try to be authentic while you're selling and sharing why it's amazing. And you're just like, it's a very confusing like day. And it's a bit, you know, like nerve wracking. It's very nerve wracking. And then to have someone sit across from you and like reject you in front of a bunch of other people and to have them say, I can't remember the person's name, but I'll have you share it. Um, when they said that people won't buy makeup from a person who looks like you. And yeah. that to me, just like, I, I felt that pain in that moment. Can you share that story? Yes, of course. Oh gosh. Yeah. Re- rejections are painful and, and how we um, show up authentically and, and, and put our own knowing, mm. our own gut, our own truth, um, our own faith on a pedestal instead mm. of the experts or the person we want to invest in our company or uh, the person we finally met after reading their books for 20 years or whatever it is, right? Yep. Um, I've learned so many tough lessons on this. One of my best friends, Natasha, would always tell me this. Like I would call her crying about another mm. no at Sephora. And she'd be like, 
And, and she's one of my strongest prayer warrior friends. Mm-hmm. So she would always say to me like, okay, first of all, the only person you should put on a pedestal is God, mm-hmm. not like the head of Sephora right now. And uh, <laughs> she would just call me out on it real quick. Yeah. And I'm like, you're right, you're right. And I would try to stay in faith. But it's really tough when the rejection's personal. Mm-hmm. I mean, probably one of the most painful rejections was, you know, we were in a space in our company uh, where we got to where we, you know, still couldn't hire anyone. We're working hundred hour weeks. We're finally starting to get some traction online by real women and men, like yeah. posting their own before and afters. We were growing and, uh, but all the retailers were still saying no, but I'm like, okay, I just, every time I was down and didn't know how we were going to make it, I would check in with my gut and just try to go, okay, God, like, is this, am I on the right path? Mm. Because I don't see any proof around me that I am like, everybody's saying no. I don't know what we're going to do. Are we going to lose every penny we have, right? Because we got down to under $1,000 in our bank account at one point, which was combined personal and company bank account. And it's really hard. And every time I would try to get still and break through that clutter of my own self-doubt and my own mind, and I would check in with my gut, I always felt like I was supposed to be doing what I was doing. Mm. And to keep going when we know that is hard because you start, you know, there's no proof around you that you're right. (laughs) Like your friends and family are getting a little worried about you. (laughs) Um, Like all those things, right? But then you keep checking in and you're like, oh, I just feel in my truth, right? Uh, That this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I kept feeling that. And then we got a big call from a potential investor. I was like freaking out because (laughs) they, um, this particular private equity company had invested in tons of the consumer products that even some pre-revenue, but like the ones that many of us shop at the grocery stores at, or, you know, department stores, like they've taken tiny companies and made them really big household Mm. names. They saw what we were doing and, uh, loved our product, thought it worked, all those things. And so we started taking meetings with them and I was like, oh my gosh. Lori, I thought this was going to be huge because Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, okay. It's been a couple of years. I keep getting no's from everybody. Like if they invest in our company, A, I'm not going to go bankrupt. B, um, (laughs) maybe they have coal and they can like get us into some of these retailers. And I'm like, (laughs) so we did several meetings. We went to the diligence phase, which is when we have to present budgets and forecasts and all that kind of stuff to them. And it got down to the final meeting and I just thought for sure it was going to be a yes. Mm. Paulo and I flew uh, to their offices and, uh, and I'll never forget, I was standing about three feet away from the head guy. Uh, and he says to me, uh, so, you know, we wanted to meet in person. Thank you for all your time. Tell you, you know, we love your product, uh, but it's going to be a no. We're going to pass on investing in it cosmetics. And I just remember it was like a punch to the gut because I didn't know what we were going to do. And I said, okay. And you know, I was super used to hearing no by that point. Yeah. So I said, okay, um, can you tell me why? Like, could you give us any feedback? And because, you know, feedback's always a gift. Right. Um, usually, usually. Usually. Um, and I'll never forget. He said, do you want me to be honest with you? Mm. And my husband's right next to me. And then he, this guy was about three feet from me. And I go, yes, please definitely be honest. Uh, and he says, well... I just don't think women will buy makeup from someone who looks like you, you know, with your body and your weight. Mm. And I remember watching his, like, it was almost like a movie of slow motion because I remember watching his mouth move and like these words come out and it was like this lifetime of battling like body doubt Mm. and self-doubt, like flooded my whole body all at once. And it was almost like I was like looking at him and it was like, I was looking at my own fear staring back at me and it was the craziest moment. And I knew deep down inside, I remember getting this gut feeling so strongly deep down inside that he's wrong. Mm. Um, But I also knew that if I was ever going to prove that one day, like I'd have to also learn to believe it, actually believe it for myself. Mm. And I thanked him for his feedback. And uh, listen, again, to, to what I shared earlier, I could have gotten super pissed. I could have been like, F you, like all those Mm -hmm. things, right? I didn't. I said, thank you. I said, thank you for your feedback. I appreciate your honesty Um, because here's why. The reason he was passing on investing in my company was like the whole reason I made my company, right? It was like, 
he is a victim just like all of us or a witness maybe is a better word of us all growing up seeing these unattainable images of beauty thinking that's what you need to look like to be enough to sell mm. products and all those things right i was like oh wow he's passing on my company like it just drove me mm. going you know this affects everybody to try and shift culture around inclusivity around the definition of beauty in the, in the industry and and by the way, just to add this fun thing, uh, fast forward a couple of years later, five, six, seven years later, um, when we sold our company for $1.2 billion cash to L'Oreal, their largest acquisition <laughs> in real history, I got an email from him. <laughs> and uh, he said, congratulations, I was wrong. Wow. Um, and by the way, it would <laughs> had he invested, it would have been the most successful investment in his company's history. Wow. Um, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I look back, there's, there's so many, and oh, oh, I'm going to get all hyper talking about this because I know you'll understand this, Lori, with, with, um, with light pink and with everything you're building. Here's what's so great, you guys. Anyone listening to this, oh my gosh, okay, or watching this who, who deals with rejection and people not believing in you. Sometimes like these no's that we get, these no's are actually serendipitous grace wrapped in this like, label called painful rejection, right? Mm. Because had he said, yes, we were so small. We had no money. Had he said, yes, then I probably would have sold him a ton of my company Mm. for like almost no money. Yeah, And then nothing would have happened the way it happened. And it's like, thank God he didn't think people would buy makeup for me because of my weight, right? (laughs) Amen to that. (laughs) Because look at, like, it just... So, but it's so hard to see it when we're in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's when it comes down to your question of, do I put this dude on a pedestal just because he has created a ton of uh, amazing companies? Or do I put my own intuition and faith and belief on a pedestal because it keeps telling me I'm on the right track and I'm supposed to be doing this, right? Mm. And that's what it comes down to sometimes in life is making those decisions because most ideas never see the light of day. Most companies never last. And Mm -hmm. I think most of the time it's because people let self-doubt get in the way, right? Or they quit because it's too hard, Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times it's really not too hard. It's just too hard to bear when we don't have the right mindset about how to handle rejection and to expect it, about Mm -hmm. how to handle no's and to expect it, about how to know when we're hearing our own self-doubt in our head versus our own truth. Mm, oh my God. So good. And, you know, you just made me have like just a, an epiphany to like summarize it super easily for whenever that happens, like to me again or to someone else again. It's like if, a lot of times when these like bigger decision makers don't understand, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a purpose if your purpose wasn't to help them understand, like eventually, right? Like they're not going to yeah. understand right away, but you're like, if they don't understand, it actually means for the most part, that you're probably on to something that needs to be understood that just isn't understood yet. And I'm like, they just don't get it yet. So we're good. Like they don't, so it it really is kind of like a knowing of your, I want to ask about just that trust and that, you know, intuition mixed with faith, because I think it's all three things really together. You get, you get intuition, but it's also this feeling of like, you know, it's going to require a lot of faith and maybe a lot of, um, you know, energy or strength or wisdom or magic or whatever you believe in to, to come in and help you. So what, how is it that you, like, how do you tap into that daily? Like, what is that for people? Maybe when people don't believe in them or don't understand, like, is there something that you did to kind of keep going? Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, tapping into that inner knowing, that intuition, I think it's a universal thing we all have, Mm -hmm. Um, regardless of if we have any particular faith or Mm -hmm. no faith, regardless of if we call our creator God or Jesus or love or the Mm -hmm. universe, right? I think that we all have this internal knowing and this this deep, you know, intuition, this gut. Mm -hmm. And I think that most people often like haven't heard it ever or haven't heard it in a long time because the noise of everything around us, of everyone else's opinion, of what's going on on social media and following into mm-hmm. that falling into that comparison trap, all the stuff around us, who's doing what, who's fighting on the news, all these things 
It's like, it's so much noise that it's so easy to go through life on autopilot, never even learning how to turn down the volume on everyone else Mm. and turn up the volume on that voice deep down inside. And, you know, intuition and learning to trust our gut is a journey, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, It's something that we build on over time. It's something that every experience we have uh, makes that, uh, that, that foundation of intuition stronger. Um, but it's something all of us have. And it's so important. It's so important. Uh, one example, like, like there were pivotal moments in my journey of when I had all this outside noise actually telling me specifically what I need to do, Mm -hmm. uh, to have success. And yet I kept getting this internal gut, like, oh no, that's not right. Mm. And this is really hard when we face those situations. And by the way, sometimes this happens when a parent is like, you need to do this. And yeah. you're like, oh, because we all like somewhere deep down aside, most of us want to like make our parents happy or we want to make our partner happy yeah. or we want to make our friends love us, whatever it is, right? And it's hard to do that when they're telling us one thing so passionately, but our truth is telling us another and we feel it, right? Mm-hmm. Or another example, the dude you're dating is shady, sketchy, <laughs> lying. We know, yep. we know. How many times are we like, oh, his phone probably did break. Yeah. Like, oh, just <laughs> fell asleep. Like, like he didn't disappear. He was just tired. Like, okay, yeah. we know, we know. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing in business, right? So it's like, how do we actually mm. learn, hear it, and then and put our faith there instead of all this noise, right? Mm-hmm. And it takes practice and it takes intentionality. Like we have to really, uh, Oprah always says, get still, right? Mm-hmm. Get still. How many times in our lives are we ever still? Yeah. I mean, even when I meditate in the morning, sometimes I catch myself like going through a to-do list in my head <laughs> or I can't, right? And it's like, when are we ever still? The times that I have gotten still mm-hmm. are when my strongest knowing happens. Mm. My, and by the way, we can do this in five minutes a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, just start that practice of going, you know what? Let me put my phone away. Let me just go sit in a closet, whatever you got to do, right? Right. <laughs> let me just see if I can even hear my own intuition on something. Like, you know, for me, I pray and yeah. that's how I hear it. But it, it, everyone has it. It does not matter if you have a spiritual practice or you don't. You can tune in and hear it. And when I look back at my journey and I share, oh my gosh, a billion stories in this book I've never shared before mm-hmm. on, 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 and so many of them tie into going with this gut instinct mm-hmm. and how did I, and what did I do right and wrong? What lessons did I learn that hopefully... Um, can add value to everyone else. But, you know, one of the the biggest pivotal moments in my journey was after three years of no's, right? From everybody, um, we finally got a yes mm. from QC. And what it meant was we had 10 minutes and one shot. And that was it. And we were only selling two to three orders a day on our website. We were packing wow. those boxes in our living room, shipping them out. It, like, like we would drive to the post office, drop them off. Like, you know, that's, that was our whole business. It was wow. barely keeping the lights on. Yeah. And, um, and we got this one shot and our first yes, um, which is also a really crazy story that I share a lot about how that happened that I never shared before in the book too. But it was like this one shot in 10 minute window. And we had to, it was a consignment deal. Okay. So we were only selling two to three orders a day on our website. We had to pay for manufacture, ship in uh, to QVC over 6,000 units of our buy by under eye concealer to be able to hit their sales goal of what it what we have to sell in a 10 minute window. And we had to we had to sell that much in that 10 minute window and not come back. We yeah, had with, one shot. Like without knowing if this would sell either. Oh, yeah. And you had to spend all oh, that yeah. money no while not idea. having money. Yeah. Not having money. Yeah. And so and 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 you know for entrepreneurs out there, never take ever, ever take a purchase order. You can't afford to lose. Uh, it's just such a basic rule. But at this point, we were going to go bankrupt or, or or we didn't know what we we're going to do. It was like, we had no money left. And this was kind of our one shot, our mm-hmm. big yes. And 
And it comes down to, to listening to my gut, mm. um, which I'll share in a second. But uh, just to share too, like we had to get an SBA loan for mm. that, that barely covered the amount of inventory we had to make. And 22 banks said no. It was the 23rd application that gave us enough money to cover just that purchase order from QVC. And so everything was on the line, right? And, I, and, and if it didn't sell in that 10 minute window, QVC shipped it back to us and we wouldn't be paid for it right? So we got a business. So everything was on the line and it came down to this 10 minute window. We had one shot and I uh, drove, uh, I flew out and then drove in a rental car uh, to the QVC parking lot a week before the airing. Mm -hmm. And I sat in that parking lot every single day, staring at the front door. I'm not sure why, but I just watched people (laughs) walk in and out. And I knew the next time I walked through those doors, I'd be walking out with like my whole life changed Mm -hmm. or I'd be out of business. It'd be one or the other. And I sat there a week out and I just prayed and cried. And, and the, the hardest thing, and this is probably one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make in my journey as an entrepreneur, was that we had hired these outside expert third-party consultants and they all told me the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. And this is you guys, oh my gosh, talking about authenticity and about putting experts on a pedestal. Like they, they were great experts that help a lot of people sell their products on TV and in stores, and they really know what they're doing. But guess what? They only know what they've ever seen work before. Right. So they told me, okay, Jamie, here's what you need to do. Use these select models, which all happen to be like early 20s, perfect skin, same skin tone, no skin problem. Don't right. need makeup. <laughs> exactly. Use these mo- models and here's how you produce your show and all these things. And I would argue with them and say, okay, but like if I'm, you know, 70 years old sitting at home watching and I'm looking at someone who looks like she's 12, like, how do I know it's going to, what is it going to look like on me? Or, you know, if there's someone who looks like I do with bright red hereditary rosacea or hyperpigmentation and they're watching, how do they know the product's going to work? And QVC is live, right? And this is the thing, Lori, that I was like, oh my gosh, my whole life I've saw, I've seen these fake magazines and commercials, QVC is live. I can actually, in my head, I kept telling myself like, oh, I can take my makeup off on live TV and prove the product works. I can prove on real women, all ages, skin tones, skin challenges, like live the product works. And so I would tell them I wanted to do that. And they literally thought I was crazy. These these third-party experts. Yeah. And so it's easy when we are passionate about our beliefs but then it's really hard Mm -hmm. when you have everyone else telling you you're wrong and when you get one shot, right? And I just remember sitting in that rental car just going, okay, like I didn't, I didn't have the option of trying it both ways. I didn't, you know, and I was just like, I just kept every time I get still, right. I kept having this gut feeling like I needed to do this. Like this was my truth. I needed to do this. And so many times in life, Lori, whether you're launching a makeup company or you're deciding who you're going to marry or you're deciding if you're going to launch your dream, right? We let everyone else's opinions and we let the proof we see around us talk us out of our own truth. Mm-hmm. And I just remember sitting there going, okay, these experts, like I'm so tempted to put them on a pedestal. They've helped so many people. I want to like, I want to do well. I want to succeed. I don't want to go out of business. But I'd sat there in that rental car for the entire week, every day alone. Um, and every time I get still and really just say, okay, God, like, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this really, I would just have this knowing that I needed to do, I needed to stay authentic to why mm-hmm. I started the company, even though everyone had said no, even though there was no proof it would work. And even though now I had one shot, with experts telling me to do one thing, right? And I remember when the the ten minute, the ten minute, and and by the way, the the one the thing that happens when you truly get still mm-hmm. is you start to have these ideas, right? Sometimes yes. people get big ideas in the shower. Mm-hmm. It's because in the shower, in the shower, you're still. You have water <laughs> coming on you. You're not right, mm-hmm. right? And we just like our our magic can happen when we get still. And I just remember thinking, like, I had this moment where. I would imagine who, who my customer was, who is this, you know, person watching, mm. who is this woman watching, this man watching, et cetera. Like, who are they? And, 
I just remember thinking like, okay, QVC is broadcast live to a hundred million homes. Mm -hmm. And if I was going to get one shot on television, what is it I want to stand for? Mm. Right. Even if people don't buy anything, what is it I want to stand for? And I just remember like imagining um, all different types of women and men. And uh, one that always gets in my head is uh, this, uh, I just imagine like a single mom folding laundry who has no time, has forgotten she matters, has forgotten she's beautiful, has forgotten she's worth it. And I just imagine her like looking up on her television. And even if she never buys anything, what is it I want her to see? Yeah. And those precious few seconds she had to glance at her television, like, I want her to see me taking off my rosacea, my, my makeup and showing my rosacea. I want her to see me, you know, showing all of our models, you know, Helen, who's in her seventies with, you know, uh, Alicia, African-American with acne prone skin and Sheila with hyperpigmentation and Desiree with under eye circles and acne her whole life. Like, and I want her to see me mm. calling them beautiful and meaning it. Mm -hmm. Like I would rather have her be reminded that she matters and reconsider how she sees her own beauty and buy nothing than like sell a shitload of product, but stand for nothing. Mm. Right. And I knew what I had to do. And I remember, but it's not easy, even though we know it's not easy. Yeah. And I remember going into the building for the first, the, the one shot we had and that clock started at 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden it's like 959, 958. And you're like, Oh, F in your head, <laughs> but you have to be really like, yeah. You know, like you can't, and you can't try to sell because nothing sells when you try to sell. And <laughs> I just remember shaking like a leaf. I remember the moment my bare face with bright red rosacea came up on national television. I remember walking to our models that were real women of mm -hmm. every age and size and skin tone and, 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 and story, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and I just remember like, there was like a, it was toward the very end of the cell, maybe a minute left. And the host was like, the deep shade is down to 200 units. The tan shade is almost gone. The medium. Oh and I was just gosh. like, oh my yeah. gosh, and I then, think I would have cried. And, I know. And I will, I remember all of a sudden at the 10 minute mark, the sold out a sign came up oh. across the screen. Tears literally started streaming down my face <laughs> and the host grabbed me. She's like, bring it in sister. And she gave me this big hug. And then they cut the camera. And I remember my husband came rushing through the studio doors. And I'm like, <gasps> like stop. Like, I like read it, but and I'm, I'm crying. Like, no women have spoken. And he's like, he looks at me and he's like, we're not going bankrupt. And I was like, oh. he's like so it was a mess. It was a mess. Oh. And, um, and that one airing uh, turned into five. We got invited back, turned into five that year, 101 the next year, 151 the year after that. And then for almost eight years in a row, now 250 live shows a year on QVC. And we went from hearing no from them for several mm -hmm. years um, to, to creating the largest beauty brand in QVC's history. It is right now at this moment to this day. Uh, and, and I share that only because for everybody that's part of your community right now, who's like, oh, I've been hearing no for three years, or I've been hearing no for a month. People get discouraged after hearing no's in a month. Yeah. You know, we heard no for three years. Uh, and not only that, the head of QVC Beauty, who's now a dear friend of mine, he's retired from QVC, like one of my greatest mentors. I'll remember one of the most painful no's I ever experienced. More painful than the dude, the investor who told me no one will buy makeup from someone with my body or my weight. Um, Alan Burke, who we finally got this big call with QVC and I will, I'll never forget I was pacing around in our office, which was our living room. And he <laughs> said to me on the phone, he's like, you know, we've reviewed your products with the buyers of QVC. It's unanimous um, that you're, no, you know, it's a no, you're not the right fit for mm. QVC or our customers. And that no was hurt me because I kept having that gut feeling you're wow. supposed to be on QVC, Interesting. right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have that, that, that internal knowing and we were listening to it. And then all of a sudden, like the head of all of QVC is saying no. Yeah. And it's like, oh, is our gut wrong? We start to question ourselves. Is our gut wrong, right? Fast forward many years after we launched on QVC, he became one of my closest friends, dearest mentors, one of the smartest mentors I've ever had in my life. Um, it turns out when he did say no, it was a gift because mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't know what I didn't know. And we weren't operationally sophisticated enough to handle a QVC sized account. We would have failed miserably. Mm. Uh, but sometimes we just don't know what we don't know. And yep. we just know we heard no. <laughs> and yeah. it sucks. Mm -hmm. um, 
And he turned into one of my greatest mentors. And years after he retired from QVC, we actually hired him mm. in a paid position on our advisory board. Wow. So the guy who rejected me was then working for me, <laughs> right? And became one of my just best advisors and mentors. And um, so anyhow, it's like, no one can tell you you're not the right fit. No one, yeah. I don't know, someone needs to hear this today, Lori. Like mm-hmm. nobody can tell you, you are not the right fit. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Nobody can talk you out of your own truth except yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So that's the biggest thing. Actually, this morning I was doing a morning walk and this big mm-hmm. thing that kept coming to my mind is like, we all face opposition of mm-hmm. some kind, whether it's mean girls or our family or our inner circle that loves us, but just doesn't get it, right? Or, or it's, investors saying, no, we all have opposition, Mm -hmm. but we also all have our calling Mm -hmm. and our purpose. And I believe your opposition cannot compete with your own calling. Mm -hmm. It just comes down to which one you listen to. Mm -hmm. And had I listened to the opposition, which If it looked like armies on a field, the opposition was like 10 million people, 10 million soldiers. And the calling was like me. (laughs) Eventually my best friend, one of my best friends who joined the company, God, Mm -hmm. right? Like, guess what? Like, I believe we're all born with a purpose and a calling and, and nothing can compete with it except if we turn down the volume on our own calling and turn up the volume on that army of opposition. And for some of us, it's just a few people telling us no. In my case, it was years of Mm -hmm. like, if I put all the people that said no out in a field, it'd be a giant army, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like trusting, learning to trust yourself is like, I think one of the most powerful differentiators and the people who last, the people who make it, the people who stick with it and go after their dream, the people who end up painting the paintings they know they want to paint. Mm-hmm. Like it's the people who learn to trust themselves and turn down the, the volume on the opposition. And sometimes the opposition is our own self-doubt in our own head, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So really learning when that's happening mm-hmm. versus what our knowing is, is so important. And that's really why I wrote this book. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, I share so many of my stories and and lessons in this book, but I wrote it because I believe every single woman out there, like, and person and man knows like deep down inside that like, you know, they're, they're, they're meant for more, but they still doubt it. Right. Cause we all Mm -hmm. do this. And it's like, how do you break through that doubt and step into the person you're born to be? And that's why I wrote this book Mm. Um, because I've been able to do that in so many ways. And then at the end of the book, the very last chapter, which only makes sense if you read the whole book, but the very last chapter, I mean, there's some crazy stuff in there where I'm like, listen, y'all, here's the truth. Mm. Here's where I'm still failing. And here's what I'm going to do about it. Um, But we're all on this journey together, right? This doesn't happen overnight, um, but it can happen. And when Mm. we learn to go from not believing in ourselves to believing in ourselves. And when we learn to like turn down the noise of other people's opinions and our own self-doubt and the people that don't get us and the experts that say no, and we learn to trust ourselves, right? That's when I think we can all go from like doubting and being underestimated to being unstoppable. Mm. Wow. I mean, there's so many things that I, 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 I literally want people to get this book because there's so many things we did not even get to cover, not even close, because um, you do share so much. Uh, it's like, look how it's, it's, I, a, it's, like, it's and, a journey. And every word of the entire, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's literally yeah. all the things I wish I knew. It is so like when I, I've been, I've been texting Jamie, you guys, and literally like trying to hold back because I'm with every single thing that I'm reading. I'm like, oh my God, (laughs) like this is either helping me with this, or I can't believe you went through this, or I had no idea. And, you know, I think for even people who they, they, I don't want to give away your whole book, but there's so many things they're not seeing like very, you've got some life trauma that you, there's a decision-making point that you share with us that is very like we get to see the inside of how a very successful meaning like how to 
come back from things quickly, brain works. And if you want that, I believe that that can be com- learned um, by seeing other people and what they've done. That's why it's so important that women like you are sharing this so openly is because when I see it, I'm like, n- you know, I'm no different. Like we're all the same. We're, we're actually all the same. All the same. So I think yeah. that's the most empowering thing that you you have this thing about you that even though I can see all of the splendor that you are, I can, you also make it doable. Like you make it so possible for me and every other woman out there. You know, thank you for saying that. I think that, you know, for so many years, you know, being CEO of a business and all that, you know, this book is 95% 95% stories I've never shared before. And it's, it's of course, professional lessons, but it's almost mostly personal lessons, yeah. right? Because I think the personal lessons we learn in life impact everything, For whether sure. it's a business or anything else. And yeah, I mean, there's a whole journey in here I talk about with um, being surprised to learn I was adopted um, in yes. my late 20s and just calling thousands and thousands of women and getting hung up on and, 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 what happens after that. And just also the whole journey of, of, uh, trying to have kids Mm -hmm. and not being able to for 10 years and the journey of the surrogacy process and what, and the adoption process and going through it all and what that looked like. Um, but really like the big personal lessons, which is like through the surrogacy journey, like I'd, I've always been like a kind of a lone wolf who kind of like prided myself, like, Oh, I want to show up for all my friends, but like, I don't need anyone because, like, I got this. Mm. Like, I thought independence and just doing it on my own and dep- only depending on myself was like a badge of honor. Mm. And I was wrong. And in going through this process and needing to trust another woman to mm. carry my baby, all those things. Wow. And having the most incredible epiphanies in the process. I learned like, oh, no, life isn't meant to do alone. Mm -hmm. And I learned that sometimes when we pride ourselves on being a lone wolf and independent, it's actually not a badge of honor. It's Mm -hmm. actually a deep-seated fear Mm -hmm. that we have deep down inside that we're not worthy of other people showing up for us. Wow. And I learned that that's what it was for me. And there's so many epiphanies I've had in this journey personally and professionally, and a lot of them have helped me um, in 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 stepping into all of who I am, mm-hmm. and uh, and so it's you know my greatest honor. Honestly, it's the best work I've ever done in, in the sense of like, um, and you know I, I wrote it just from a pure intention to serve the mm. whole the whole book and you know as you know I'm donating 100 percent of the proceeds and this is really truly just my heart poured into the, into a book that is like my greatest gift to share with every single woman and every Mm -hmm. single person, um, on their own journey. Because the one thing I've learned through this of whether it's building a billion dollar business or this or that, or like the greatest joy I have in life, Laura, you'll know this. The greatest joy I have in life is like, Oh my gosh, if I can be of service to another woman Mm -hmm. or person or champion them, or if all this shit I've gone through is in somehow a gift to someone else, so they fail less, they Mm -hmm. learn more, they cry less. Like crying is great, but you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Painful cry, they painful cry less. Like that fills my soul Mm -hmm. in a way that nothing else can. And so that's really, you know, my hope and prayer in the book. The book's really for anybody who's ever Mm -hmm. dealt with doubt, doubting themselves, feeling underestimated and like wants to break through that. So Mm -hmm. excited. Oh my God, you guys, it's so good. It's for anyone who breathes because you just share so many life (laughs) stories. Like I can't wait for my husband to read it. I've been reading it out loud to him in the morning. He's like, oh my God, I need to read it. Um, So he's super excited. I think you're going to have like such a wide demographic because it's life. You really share about life and how it impacts the things that you do whether that's business yeah. or whatever that is. So I am, I'm like, I can't even wait for this I know, to get I've out. I've never shared about the, being on this first season of Big Brother before. I know. I was um, like, oh my God, I had no watch. idea. <laughs> or like what Michelle Obama said to me or yeah. Oprah. I got Oprah's blessing. She read it cover to cover. So everything in there, I got her blessing. Um, wow. uh, or I would have never shared it, but like, I taught, wait, okay. I know you've read 99.9% of it. You have like a couple of pages left. I do. And Lori, you're going to freak out at the last 
I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to wait till I get okay. your text. Okay. Because, because you're going to be like, no way. Like, great. Now, now I'm going to read it right after this. <laughs> you might be embarrassed for me too. I don't know, but it is what it is. <laughs> I'm guessing we all share. That was the best part is even some of the parts that I read when I was like, I was die. I was like, felt embarrassment for you. I was yeah. like, also like, I've totally had experiences like this, not this, but like this. So it just made me feel so seen that I think it made me laugh out loud oh. even harder. I was just like, you guys will die laughing. You will cry. I told Jamie, I, I had texted her when I was reading it. And I'm like, I have been on the most emotional journey. I have laughed out loud. I have cried my eyes out. And I just did that on an airplane recent, recently with your book. And I just didn't even care who was looking because I just wanted to be like, get, just read it, get it. Um, so anyway, so excited, Jamie. And as always, like love having you uh, on the show so that people can also just hear y- you are just you're so relatable. Um, you're so like, that's something you've never lost. And I don't think you I've even have the ability to understand the impact that you make, which also might be some of your super authentic magic. I'm not sure, but it's just, it feels, um, you know, you are, you are doing the mission that you came here for and we're so grateful for it because it's impacting us. So we've got some really cool stuff for you, Jamie. I know on your end, you're doing some cool stuff, uh, with your book, if people purchase your book. So can we talk about that? Yes. Okay. So it's officially coming out. Yay! <laughs> this week. This week. Ah, tomorrow. so exciting. Yes. <laughs> um, tonight at midnight. So it's officially shipping. So I'm so 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 excited. And so we're doing one special um, for your community for for launch week. Mm-hmm. Um, this week only. Um, if you order the book, uh, uh, you can go to believeit.com and you're gonna get for free um, uh, my first ever digital course I put oh together. Gosh. Called. Yeah, first ever, and just doing it for wow. to, to, to thank you for for buying the book. And it's called Becoming Unstoppable: um, How to Overcome the Things Holding You Back. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get that for free. Plus, um, I put together a 20 plus page um, workbook for you that you'll just download it. You get it right away for free. And uh, when you order the book, and you it takes uh, it takes you through all the things on how to like implement the lessons from the book into your real life. Wow. So I'm super excited, but it's just this, this launch week. So um, if you guys want that stuff, it's super easy. Just get it on believeit.com. And, um, and if you love the book, please give it a review mm-hmm. and please, oh my gosh, please um, share with me uh, uh, your thoughts. Also, um, the, I'm on Instagram most at Jamie Kern Lima. And sh- if you have feedback on the book, literally like when I get texts from Lori and, you know, <laughs> my friends who've read it, um, I cry because it's mm-hmm. why I did it. You know what I mean? And so share with me definitely, um, uh, your own stories and what you took away from the book and all that stuff. Oh my God. So cool. You guys, so definitely purchase the book. And we're also going to do a quick giveaway on this podcast, but here's what you're going to do. You're going to purchase the book because if you win the giveaway, you got to give it to your friend because your friend needs it too. Like I, I swear to you, I'm like, all of my friends are getting this book. Like I'm going to be the best gift giver because this book is going to rock their world. Um, so with that said, you guys go purchase the book and you're going to get her awesome course. Uh, and then what we want to do is for the first 10 people who share this on Instagram stories, this podcast, what you're going to do is share this exact podcast and your biggest takeaway, also mentioning the book and Jamie. And what we'll do is I will go back and choose the first 10 and I will send you a book. So Jamie's going to be sending me 10 books that I'm going to be sending to you. And that way we can see what your biggest takeaway was as well. And it can also help get uh, the book out there so that your friends will read it too. All right, you guys, uh, Jamie, I'm so grateful for you. Like beyond. I literally usually have so many things to say, but I'm a bit like I have so much to say that all I can tell you is that you are one of the women who I can't wait to go back and write you a letter and tell you all of the impact that you've made in my life. Totally getting choked up. So I look forward to the day that I get to do that uh, for you. So thank you so much. And you guys, so grateful as always for listening to the podcast. And until next time, earn your happy. Bye everyone. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with me on the Earn Your Happy podcast. I am so glad that you stopped by. If you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would love it, that would be absolutely amazing and we would be forever grateful. Also, please leave us a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and leaving us an honest 
thought, an honest comment. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear more of. It would really help us out on our journey to helping thousands and thousands of people. Until then, don't forget to earn your happy. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, do you know what the big secret is this year? And it shouldn't be a secret because this should be your biggest focus. It is building your community. I am always working on building and nurturing my community and everyone is talking about the power of community. Without an online community, you just cannot grow organically or create a real movement, which is what I know that we're all after. And you can build trust or monetize your audience. When you get community right, Not only does your audience grow faster, but so do your sales. But where's everybody gonna be managing their communities these days? And a lot of online entrepreneurs and thought leaders are turning to circle.so. Circle is an all-in-one community platform. It lets you host content and create discussions, live streams, group chats, and memberships all under your own brand. And what's so cool about Circle.so is that you don't even need a website or Facebook group. Instead, Circle lets you build your own community site where you can host content and manage your members. You can even create locked and unlocked content spaces, groups, and classes. How freaking cool is that? You can put your content behind a paywall too, and you can charge different amounts of money for different spaces on your community site. Circle.so is famously easy to use, and it has a free 14-day trial for you, so you can go check it out, see if you like it, see if you love all the options. Just go to circle.so. Go check it out right now, you guys. Imagine being able to manage your community, start group chats and live classes, and accept payments all in one place. Kind of mind-blowing since this is usually spread all over the place. You have to log into so many different things. If this is the year to capture, organize, and monetize your community, head over to circle.so. You can get a free trial and start building your online community right now. Just go to circle.so. You guys, you get the 14-day free trial. So just go and see if it's for you. It's going to streamline everything and make your life so much easier. It's so freaking cool. Want to know a huge secret to my success? Okay, not only my success, but just about every single person that I have interviewed on this podcast who is successful has this in common. You guys, they love to journal. They capture their life lessons and what they're grateful for. But a lot of people don't keep this up consistently. And most people do know that the research shows that journaling deepens your gratitude and increases self-awareness. But did you also know that journaling decreases stress and helps you achieve your goals faster? In fact, journaling is a huge differentiator between average performers at work and high performing people. It leads to longer term clarity, confidence, and success. So why don't more people journal? Why didn't I journal consistently? Honestly, they don't like staring at a blank page. It's hard to carry a book around with you or a notepad, and they just don't even know what to write about, or they just forget. That's why I know that you're going to love Growth Day. It's the world's number one system for self-improvement, and it's like all-in-one personal development in an app. And it has an awesome digital journal, and people love it. Growth Day's digital journal has hundreds of research-backed writing prompts for self-reflection, positive mindset, confidence building, and success. I use them all the time, and it makes me think in ways that I typically don't, and it makes me ask myself better questions, which we all know gets better results in our lives life. It even has prompts that help you develop a daily, weekly, or monthly habit of reflecting on your life and identifying areas to grow. So it's a perfect time of year to start journaling, you guys. When you sign up at Growth Day, you also get systems for habit tracking, goal setting, and scoring and improving every area of your life. Best of all, I get to teach there too, you guys. I'm so excited. I hope that I get to see you. I teach live in Growth Day every single month with a new topic just for you. So join me there. Start your free trial at growthdate.com slash Lori. Hey, 
Hey y'all, I'm so excited to share with you, Earn Your Happy is now part of Growth Day Podcast Network. A bunch of us are coming together to bring more growth to the world and support shows and brands that we truly believe in. And one of my friends is also on the network and I'd love for you to go subscribe to his show. You guys, Trent Shelton has the most incredible podcast. It's called Straight Up with Trent Shelton. And it's going to remind you that you are built for this. I have heard Trent speak in person multiple times. I've listened to his podcast a ton. He's coming on the show and I literally cannot wait because this man just spits straight fire. It is like truth that goes to your core and makes you take action right away. If you want one of those podcasts that when you're just out on a walk, you can't help but want to start running and run through a wall in your life, this is the show to go listen to. So you guys make sure that you go subscribe to the show straight up with Trent Shelton. You're going to love it.